Most of us have heard of food deserts by now, areas that do not have access to nutritional fruits and vegetables. They're found in rural and urban areas, and the same is true of child care deserts. There are many of them in Oklahoma, and it's a real problem for working moms and dads. Kennedy Sepulveda has our report. Little Dog's Child Care in Minka, Oklahoma is the only licensed child care center in town. We have children from Yukon, from Pocasa, from Amber, from Tuttle, and from Chickasha that come to us. Grady County is one of 34 counties in Oklahoma that is considered a child care desert. So there was really a lot that was factored into discovering the deserts that you see on that list. And so, um, but like I said, we paid for that wonderful robust service of just really looking into the census and all of that information, looking at the tracks and just helping us identify the spaces that we really could use more child care. Those factors include the number of families in the area, where people travel for work, what child care services are offered in the area, and what wait lists look like at the current centers. The Center for American Progress Early Learning Fact Sheet for 2021 shows that 55% of Oklahomans live in a child care desert. Our child care desert grant, which is not only for our providers to expand their services, but we're looking for new providers to actually come into some of these desert counties and actually start new programs to make sure that we have just enough options for our families here in Oklahoma. Funding for that grant will come from the American Rescue Plan Fund. Child care centers can use the Child Care Desert Startup Grant to expand current operations, open new centers, or open home child care. One of the caveats, of course, to this grant is that we're providing that capital and that funding to start up, but you have to procure your own facility. So we're doing family child care homes as well as centers. So your family child care home is typically within a home environment, and it usually has the capacity of up to 12 children. And so that might be something more or attainable, but of course, we want to encourage programs and centers as well. I was just talking with somebody at the licensing office to try to find out some details about that. In this building, we have lots of rooms, and so it would probably be more beneficial for us to increase our capacity here than it would be to try to start a new building because there's no way to build a building by 2023, July of 2023. The need for more child care staff teachers and centers throughout the state has affected Oklahomans wishing to get back to work after the pandemic. In 2019, over 26,000 Oklahoma parents had to make career sacrifices due to child care issues. In 2021, that number reached just under 50,000. While child care services around the state were shutting down during COVID, St. Luke's United Methodist Church made sure their child care service remained open so that parents could work. Yay! I can't even tell you how many parents thanked us during COVID for staying open because it was such a help to them and they were, even when they worked from home, they had to have childcare because obviously you can't have infants or even school age children asking you all day, can you help me with my work? Can you do this? Can you do that? And it just doesn't work for a parent. Families in Mingo were not as lucky. Garber had to jump through hoops to provide new childcare services to families in Grady County. Due to COVID-19 precautions and staffing shortages, it took nearly 10 months to meet all the DHS requirements and process paperwork before Little Dog's Child Care could open its doors. Many of my parents were waiting to go back to work after COVID. They had been home, they were tired of being home, ready to get back out. Some of them working for the first time, some of them with new jobs in the health care field. Um, they waited in April when we opened up, they were ready to bring their children. <laughs> That's so silly. Both child care centers have already benefited from federal funds allocated through DHS. We got our new playground paid off. Um, I had a huge tree in our yard. I had that removed because it would become unsafe, you know, close to winter time. Um, we've got tablets for all our classrooms for the teachers to use with the Brightwell program, which was another um, grant through DHS that I was able to take part in. So the grants have um, enabled us to reward our teachers and thank them for staying with us during COVID and continuing with us after COVID. We have been able to give our, bon our teachers a bonus last year and this year in the middle of the year, as well as their Christmas bonus at the end of the year. We're um, of course sad about how we receive these additional funds, but we are excited about what we're able to do with it and how we're able to support 
our state and our children. With the help of this grant, more child care centers and homes can come available for Oklahoma families, but Oklahomans must do their part. Don't be afraid to open a child care center. Some people are like, oh, DHS, they're coming into my house. Don't be afraid of that. They're there to help you. They're not there to criticize. They're there to help you. Um, they, we have books, handbooks, everything. It tells you everything you need to do. And like I said, if you need help opening a home, I'm willing to help do that. First, new providers must go through a background check. But as far as getting that education and getting the everything that you need to really be established in a child care provider space, we're able to handle that and we're able to support that through the Center for Early Childhood Professional Development. That is something that we are covering and that we're encouraging and supporting. Kennedy Sepulveda, Run! The Oklahoma News Report. Run!